Our next guest is the J Boy. We know him, Jake Crane here, host of the on the Daily Wire there, Crane and Company. What's going on, my man? How you been? Oh man, been great. You know, it's this time of year, it's kind of bittersweet. We get all these great matchups. You know, the playoff picture's kind of taken fold, the coaching carousel begins, but it also means we're the last week of the regular season of college football, man. I mean, it it flies by, it always does. But I'm excited to eat some turkey this week, I can tell you that much. Hey, so is it still okay to call you the J Boy? Because I know that was like uh of course. All right, just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'll always be, always be J Boy. You know, at, at at heart. But I even got it on my uh, X or Twitter or whatever, whatever they're calling it this week uh, on my handle. So of course, man. Well, let's get into it. How intrigued are you by this A and M coaching search and what the future could look like for a program that hasn't gotten it right? Well, you know, I'm I'm very intrigued. I mean, you look at A and M. You look at the brand, right? You look at the resources. I've continued to say, regardless of of what you know, others on the outside think that A and M has had everything to win at a high level, except the right leader. And eventually, math tells you, just like I believe math tells you that there's aliens out there with the billions of stars and planets. Eventually, they're going to get it right. Now, there's a guy I have in mind. I think he probably you would have heard maybe more about it, maybe not uh, if they go get him. But at some point, A and M is going to hire the right guy who can be the the part of the mega ranger because again what does AM not have right and uh, they have the resources they have the facilities they have the the nil you have the tradition you have the loyalty you have the fan base the home field atmosphere it's just they need the right leader and and eventually they're going to get it right will they do it this time we'll see so who do you think that right name is you say you got an idea of one like wh- who do you think makes sense pretty simple same reason why i take a guy in the transfer portal that i've watched tape on before over projecting a guy out of high school it's urban meyer like, and you say that people are like, oh, oh, Urban Meyer, like it's Kim Jong-un or something. Yet I see him on Fox every Saturday on Big Noon Kickoff. Urban Meyer, I'm not saying he's the greatest person of all time, but I, I hate to tell everybody, there's a lot of people in this business that aren't exactly the greatest people of all time. There's a lot of coaches that have won who have not been the greatest people of all time. Everybody's not John Wooden. Sometimes you're Bob Knight. It works out like that. And when I look at a guy like Urban Meyer, you can sit here and project, hey, Lance Leipold's done a great job. Jeff Trailer's done a great job. But you haven't seen him in this environment going up against what they're going to have to go up against, including Texas and Oklahoma. I've seen Urban Meyer do that before. Not only have I seen him do it, I've seen him thrive. NIL takes care of recruiting. I've, I've said this before, and people are like, oh, can he adapt to the times? Urban Meyer's greatest strength is his hiring ability. He knows who to hire to help him run the thing. He's got a great schematical mind, but he understands the CEO aspect of it. And the biggest thing, Nuno, and I think this this would get him where you didn't have to break the bank. Nobody's done it at Texas A&M before. C. Spurrier had done it at Florida before. Multiple guys had done it at Ohio State before. You can be the first one. You can be the golden goose. You can be the guy in the statue that started all of it, that turned Texas A&M into the monster. And some people won't like his, his personality. Well, guess what? When he's out there beating Alabama and Texas and Oklahoma, you're going to love him. Absolutely love him. I think Urban Meyer's a proven commodity. It's about time A&M got it right. And if you want to win, that's the guy you need to go get. Are you not scared off by the fact that he hasn't coached in five years? No. Because I it, – it, Here's my thing. You have guys and different coaches have won with different styles, right? We've seen guys that call plays. We've seen guys that are CEOs. Urban Meyer, I think, is a great blend of that. It's not like he hasn't kept up with what's going on. You know, you look around the coaches talk. It's actually a lot smaller circle than what people think. And you know this, Nuno, and Billy Billy and them know this. It's a lot smaller circle than what people think. And again, it comes down to hiring. I don't think Tim Cook at Apple could build an iPhone from scratch. But I know he knows who to hire. And at the end of the day, that's what wins when you're dealing with this amount of people. When you're dealing with a program that has that amount of personnel, that's the difference. Jake, uh, what's the bigger talking point? This amazing LSU offense or this ridiculously bad LSU defense? Well, man, you, you talk about being gut wrench. And I asked the other day, what's, what's worse as a fan? Having LSU's offense and LSU's defense or having Penn State's defense and Penn State's offense? <laughs> to me... To me, I think the bigger talking point is the offense because of what Jaden Daniels is doing. Uh, I mean, this offense, he, you sit here and you start looking at the numbers, and and, you, and again, Jamar Chase, incredible player. Justin Jefferson, incredible player. Joe Burrow, incredible player. Uh, what what Jaden Daniels has been able to do with, with guys like Malik Neighbors and Brian, Th- Brian Thomas Jr., who are great players, has been equally as impressive to me. The, it's sad, though, 
that this defense is that bad. My question, you know, is how, how can LSU's defense be that bad? It's weird to watch. I when still when I think of LSU, I do not think of offense. I think of those creatures they have running around on defense, knocking people's head off. The Glenn Dorseys, the Honey Badgers, the Marcus Spears. I can go down the list of guys that they put in the league every year. I mean, Harold Perkins this year has kind of put on the invisibility cloak and just disappeared in front of everybody. So while it's a bigger shock that LSU is that bad, while it's awkward to look at, to be honest with you, to watch LSU be bad on defense. What they're doing on offense is ridiculous, and they've done it against everybody. If Jane Daniels doesn't get hurt against Alabama, and I know if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, that game may have ended like the Tennessee game did for Alabama last year. That's how good this cat is. That's how good this offense is. And uh, I don't think Matt House is going to be there at the end of the year, but they better hope Mike Denbrock is because, boy, did they figure it out after the first week. No doubt about that. Talking to Jake Crane here on up to the second college football. Let's talk Michigan-Ohio State. Like, you know, the, the no horror ball, Ryan Day's got to get over, no excuses. Uh, I think I saw you talking to Joel Klatt about that. Just overall, what is this game going to come down to this weekend? Well, look, you know, a, at the end of the day, the game always comes down to, to how you play up front. But I think when you look at this matchup, the most glaring difference that I see is at the quarterback position and the experience, right? You know, throughout this year, I've heard people say, well, we don't know about Michigan. Michigan hadn't played anybody. You want to know how I know about Michigan? I've watched the same core of players for the last two years. It's basically the same cats. All they did was add a couple really good offensive linemen. They can have up to seven offensive linemen taken in this draft. Now, when I look at Ohio State, defense is very talented, right? Kyle McCord, though, when a game that is, is going to be decided by three to five plays like this game is going to be, how much do they trust Kyle McCord on the road to be able to open up this offense enough to let Maserati Marv, which we're going to hear 800 times this Saturday, or Ibuka or Stover and them really take advantage of what they can get against a Michigan defense that is experienced and very talented. So I think at the end of the day, as obvious as it may sound, I think it's going to come down to the quarterback position because a lot of times – Teams lose games. They don't win them. Who's going to make that mistake? Who's going to make the critical error outside the pocket? Who's going to fumble a snap when they're not looking? That's what I think it comes down to. I think Michigan's defense comes up with a big touchdown to seal it late off a mistake by Kyle McCord, even though J.J. has been a little little iffy with his decision-making lately. I think a little bit of that's because Sharon Moore has held some stuff back, and J.J.'s itching to get the ball down the field. So I think it's a quarterback position. All right, Jake, let's uh, close out with Alabama and Auburn. Um, I think the fact that Auburn lost this past weekend, people may be sleeping on them, but magic does happen typically at Jordan Hare or sometimes does happen. So how yeah. does this game break down for you? Yeah, don't ever bury a pet or a person at Jordan Hare because it will come back to life uh, and not in a good way. I've seen crazy things happen. I'm from the 334. Uh, I'm from Lee County, and I- I've watched it my-, my whole life. I think the New Mexico State win over Auburn was the worst thing that could have happened for Alabama and one of the worst things that could happen for Auburn from an optics standpoint, right? Even though this New Mexico State team isn't Alabama State. You hear New Mexico State and you're like, oh, they're terrible, whatever. This Jerry Kill team's not bad. Now, Auburn should have beat them. Uh, it's, it's unacceptable and inexcusable. But when I look at this game, it, it feels like Alabama has embraced, obviously, who Jalen Milrow is as a player. You look at the way the game plan's been ta- a game plan's been tailored. You look at the way the play calling's been tailored to his strengths. I think Auburn's able to hang in it a little bit. My question isn't can Auburn move the ball between the 20s. It's can they score touchdowns in the red zone. I think they're going to have a good plan. But when you get to Jalen Milrow defensively, it's already hard enough to get to him. Can you get him on the ground? Because what's going to gut Auburn is the same thing that guts every defense on the planet. You're going out there and you're overmatched. And stopping Alabama's run, it can be done, you know. We've seen this happen before to this Alabama offensive line through different points of the year. They've kind of picked it up. But if you do get Jalen Monroe into predictable passing downs, you shut him down on first down at second and eight. You stop him on second and eight, it's third and seven. You got him locked up in the back end on third and seven, and Auburn's secondary is not bad. But you you overrush the passer. He shakes a tackle in the backfield and runs for eight and a half and extends that drive where they go down and score. That's what'll gut you. Ron Roberts, Auburn's defensive coordinator, I think is going to mix it up. You need a whole buffet. It can't be a single course meal here. It can't be one thing. Can't live in a world of absolutes. I think it'll be closer than what people think. I'm actually leaning toward Auburn covering the plus 14 and a half, but I just feel like Alabama at the end of the day, science is science. Gravity is gravity. Talent is talent. Auburn's got one four-star. 
that starts on offense. Uh, hey, I like Alabama to win this game. Jake, great stuff, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's do it again, all right? You know, it's always fun, man. You guys do a great job, and uh, everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the football watching. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. Talk to you soon.